Welcome everyone to All Growth Podcast. I'm your host, Alvaro Gamboa. Thank you so much for returning with us again. This is episode five, All Convenience. We're talking about the culture of convenience, the costs to convenience, and the cures to convenience in all our lives. I'm your host, Alvaro Gamboa. This is All Growth. I'd like to start by giving a huge shout out to our sponsors over in the Growth Garden. Now, in the Growth Garden is a space that we've created in order to promote and highlight black and brown businesses so that they can, in turn, plant their seeds within us and we can plant our seeds within them and we can all grow together. Today in the Growth Garden, we have our sponsor, Posh Faces. Posh Faces has everything posh that you can think of, specifically shouting out and calling for the Beard Gang Nation to come through. Head on over to Bosch Faces. They have a special beard kit along with several beard oils and beard accoutrement or accessories that you can have for the finessing of your beard. Now, if you're looking at me right now, if you've seen me in the past, my beard has been getting better by the day. I promise you I'm not making this up. I have a cedar wood and sandalwood beard oil that I use on my beard that has been giving me my beer, that firmness, that scent, that deliciousness that I've been missing out with Posh Faces Beard Kit, you have not only the option of two beard oils, but you have also a blueprint pomade and a blueprint pomade wax. Now the blueprint beard kit is a phenomenal kit that you can give to your brother, your husband, your friend, your uncle, cousin, whoever you know is in need of a beard lift. Whoever is in need of a beard lift, any man in your life that you know is, uh, wants to be a part of the Beard Gang Nation but isn't just there yet, or someone that's in the Beard Gang Nation and wants to level up as well. Because you're a listener of All Growth, we have friends over at Posh Faces. We've gotten you a special promo code. So head on over to poshfaces.com, get all the beard accessories, all the fantastic things that you'll be wanting for your beard. Use our promo code GROWTH for a 10% discount on your entire purchase. All right, again, that's promo code GROWTH, G-R-O-W-T-H, for a 10% discount on your entire purchase. Not only do they have fantastic beard accessories and beard oils and a pomade, they offer you clippers to go ahead and get yourself trimmed up. They also offer you a comb so you can comb through your beard and make sure it's looking nice and sexy and delicious as it should be. For the ladies as well, Posh Faces has a, a history of being in the skincare game. Not only does Posh Faces offer a blueprint beard kit, they also offer a line of skincare items for your skincare needs. The one thing I can recommend is this body glow, and I've seen it from my own eyes, this body glow, oh my God, it's it brings a glowing to your skin. It's like, like the sun-kissed skin that you have. It's so beautiful. For those interested, head on over to poshfaces.com and use our promo code GROWTH, G-R-O-W-T-H, for a 10% discount on your entire purchase. Here at All Growth Podcast, we like to start off our episodes by planting seeds. If you look at life as a garden, when we start off planting seeds, we're looking at ways in which we can go ahead and manifest, set some intentions, create goals, and create a structure of what we're going to be talking about today. Now, with planting seeds, with today's episode, All Convenient, we're going to be looking at ways in which convenience manifests itself in our everyday life. Lives. Some areas of our everyday lives that convenience can manifest itself includes life, work, your relationships, your friendships, and food. These five areas, they might not seem like it, but convenience has infiltrated in every area and every facet of our lives. And let's start by looking at life. Overall, how has life been made more convenient in our lives? Just off the bat, we all have phones right now if you're hearing or if you're listening if you're seeing me it is through te- a technological screen essentially so technology has shaped our modern day lives from the very morning the, the the very beginning of our days to the very end of our days and we've let it granted we've let it we've allowed it uh, we've get consented and given permission to these things because of the fact that convenience is so eye appealing it's so sought after how can we go ahead and and cut this corner or shave this point. When we look at how technology has infiltrated our lives, we have to really understand that technology has made us slaves to our phones, to our screens, for for the simplest ease of convenience. We use our phones every day to do everything that you don't wanna do from like making things simpler for you, remembering things, remembering numbers, birthdays, contact information, like where this place is at, using GPS so you can get around. But when you use your phone to do everything that you don't want to do and you make these things simpler, for you in turn you are being made more reliant on that technology you're being made more reliant on your phone and the technology to live to be self-sustaining because of this convenience we find ourselves driving or being driven to places we find ourselves having the friendships and the connections that we do have we do a lot less walking 
during our day than previous generations. A lot less walking makes us more sedentary, cash potatoes. Thus, we would end up resorting to convenience for a means to an end, for sustenance, for the ability to live, which is a flaw in and of itself. Now, if you look at food and how convenience has infiltrated, I don't even have to understate how convenience has perverted our minds around food. The rise of convenient fast food and now even fast casual restaurants, things where like you can order food made to order and then have it sat there and sit down down there in that restaurant or that fast food, fast casual restaurant and, and enjoy that food and then go on about your day like nothing happened. That is something that has perverted our, our lives for, for years now. With coronavirus, COVID, this pandemic, lockdown, quarantine, whatever word you want to use to describe the situation that we're in, that cannot happen right now. Some states have lifted or gone into different phases of allowing restaurants to open up again and thrive. Throughout this time, the main way that restaurants have been allowed to live is through takeouts and delivery orders. And that's something that was even before the, this pandemic. With fast food restaurants having takeout and delivery orders, the thing that comes up is that you're gonna have plenty of excuses to not A, cook for yourself, not look for food for yourself, not be able to forage even. When we say forage, it's like a very ancient way of looking at things or like scrounging around. When you know that you can order food at the tip of your fingers and like a snap like that, you have food, that leads you to live a very convenient lifestyle and it doesn't really allow you to have full control of the food and how or what you consume. With takeout and delivery orders, we have to look at how convenience has uh, destroyed us and destroyed restaurants as well. With these takeout delivery apps, they end up costing restaurants money. They end up taking money from the restaurants, from us, and for profit. That's how they make profit. So if you look at the action of, of takeout and, and the action of deliver, having food delivered to you, you know, having the idea of whole foods being delivered to you within minutes of placing your order, it not only leaves you plenty of excuses to not to cook, but when you don't eat fresh food, you lose out on uh, plenty of the micronutrients that come in fresh food. So while you may have a hearty meal, you might end up being nutritionally starved. Because of the fact that convenience has infiltrated the way we think about food, you also have to look at shopping for food. Things like Instacart and other grocery delivery services, they've made your ability, our ability, my ability to go out and get food much easier, much more convenient and because of that, that convenience leaves us relying on others, relying on people, things outside of ourselves. So you have to understand that with uh, these technological advancements and the conveniences that are made, these do help people out, yes. Like the elderly, the disabled, people that have no longer the ability to go out and fend for themselves and provide for themselves, yes. The people in my demographic, <laughs> millennials, everyone basically of any age, has uh, the ability to use these services and use these workers so that makes it more convenient for them as well which is a perversion in and of itself if you look at convenience within relationships you'll notice that you have online dating which has been around for a couple of decades now you have app dating now and then something uh, an idea that has been around far longer than both is speed dating these convenient systems for dating and for relationship they make it okay to see someone in the moment and not having to fully invest into someone or fully experience a person. With the rise of speed dating, we get acquainted with the idea of seeing someone for just a few moments, if you will, seeing them within this select time frame, whether or not they adhere to our, or they check off our boxes, our requirements of who, our, who we want our partners to be, then we could just go ahead and slide them on and on to the next. The same goes for online dating. For online dating, for a number of years now, you just go to whatever website, you type in whatever website, put in your requirements, and then through algorithms, through matchmakers, through artificial intelligent matchmakers, get connected with someone that they think you might be a good fit with. That that has led to successes and that has led to downfalls as well. So it's a balanced system. I think of that whole system as flawed. I don't online date. I don't um, speed date. That's not how I roll. It's not really, I don't really have good experience with that. The rise of app dating, I find that this system has been fully excavated in mind and we just see the worst of the worst of people's dating habits, if you will. This has distorted our dating habits. Now, let's go back in time a little bit to before the internet, to before technology and before these convenient systems. Before all of that, you had to know 
people. You have to see them and experience them face to face. And usually in dating, the way you found someone is through a recommendation of a friend of a friend, right? So there goes that referral system, that buddy system. Also the experience of seeing someone face to face and experiencing them in their entirety, in their entire being. Because we don't have this privilege anymore, or this, or this luxury in some people's eyes, we're going to have to take our, our risks. We're going to have to date at our own risks through online dating, through app dating. And if we don't like someone, then it's just all convenient for us to just swipe right, uh, swipe left or whatever and then just keep going when you thank you next i'm done with you go ahead that leads people to see dating as a convenience to them they can do it whenever they feel like it if someone isn't adhering to your standards then you could just drop them off like a bag of bricks and like thank you next i'm out now when you look at convenience and friendships we find the idea of convenient friends to come about this idea of convenient friends it leads people to have friends that share the same hobbies with them, same mannerisms, the same lifestyles. I always think about this quote that comes about in having friendships, right? Tell me who your friends are. I'll tell you who you are. And it rings true before technology, during technology, even after technology. Are your boys, are your friends, are your homies, are they people that are that you're around because it's convenient? Are you like active participants in your friends' lives and, and helping them grow? And, and do they help you and facilitate your growth as well? Like hanging around someone because they are convenient can come back to hurt you. And that's not something that we readily talk about in, in today's society, whether or not your friends are convenient or whether or not they're promoting your growth and expanding and helping your evolution, expanding your perspective and where you are in life. If they're helpful in that regard. And if not, then it just might be a convenient friend. I want us to think about this idea of convenient work. When we think about convenience in our work, we think about convenient work, the thing that you, you have to do and get done. That leads to unsatisfying work, work without a purpose, work without any pursuit. Think about right now in this day and age, millions of Americans are, are working from home. So that leads to a, a convenience for us in having no commute. And the convenience of not having a commute, you get to wake up whenever you want, not have to worry about the hustle and bustle of getting to work. From there, you can just wake up when you want, wake up, clock in, and then go to work. I know of people that, myself included before them, will wake up right when they need to to get to work. So I know that there are people out there that are scheming around their work schedule so that they can get to get some rest and then wake up right when they need to, maybe like five minutes before clocking in and then clock in. Not having any time for yourself in the morning for the first couple of minutes or even hours that you're awake it links and connects us, our conscious moments into the grind of like, okay, I'm awake. My awake time has to be for work. I'm going to just clock in and we're just going to make money. Uh, we're going to do the work that they tell us to do. And then once we clock out, we get to rest again, or we get to have time for ourselves. That's flawed. That is very much so flawed because those first couple of minutes that we're awake or that first hour or two that we're awake, they're the most crucial. Those are where we set our intentions where we think about how we're gonna move about this day, what things need to be handled during this day, or maybe even have time, peace, time for yourself, a place at a time and solitude. When you don't have that, your inner wiring, the inner being is, is thrown off, right? And there are people that live like this, millions of people that live like this, where they just get up, do what they need to do to get to work. Beforehand, it was hour, get ready, get your food, go on the train or get on the highway, get in your car to, Go to your work. Once you're at work, say hi to everyone, clock in. Now, all of that has been eliminated, but yet still, I'm pretty sure and I'm betting on people just waking up when they need to clock in, clocking in and then just getting to work, which is flawed in and of itself. If you look at another example of convenience in our work, we look at the rise of mobile businesses. Mobile businesses, which means that the business comes to you as opposed to you coming onto the business or well, going into the business. And that leaves a lot of the hassle of business to that business owner and putting the bill onto them to make it so that they have a mobile business where they can be mobile, go to you as opposed to you coming to them. A mobile business would be ice cream man. Very simple mobile business. Instead of you going to the ice cream store, the Cold Stone Creamer, instead of you going to them, they come to you. And the ice cream man has been around so many years. He's an American staple. Amplify that by a number of businesses. You have mobile dog grooming, mobile dog walking, mobile, or even online businesses. And this idea of an online, of a mobile, of a free business is convenient. Yes, but there are downsides to that as well. So now that we've discussed the seeds that we want to plant for today's episode, I think it's time that we give those seeds the things that they need to grow, which is water and light. 
So for today's water and light, we're talking about the things that we need to grow, the things that we want to talk about and address in terms of convenience for today's episode. And the things that I want to discuss today for convenience is what are the sacrifices being made for convenience and what are the costs of convenience? What are the true costs of convenience? Some sacrifices that we make because we want things to be convenient for us, we give up and we sacrifice our autonomy. Our autonomy is essentially your sense of self, your ability to be self-reliant. And we give that up, right? The very ability, the very simple ability to do and provide for yourself is given up when you pass the buck onto someone so that you can have a more convenient life. And that goes with every area. Area that we discussed with every area that we discussed the food life friendships relationships and work when you give up a piece of yourself for convenience nothing good could come out of it while i do believe that some things can be made convenient we could be strategic about things having convenience in your life cutting those corners and shaving those points does not make for good people and does not make for a good system of life another sacrifice that we make during our time when we want to be convenient is our security our security and sense of, in our sense of feeling secure of who you are what you are, what you provide to the world, where you are. These are all things that are sacrificed for you because when you sacrifice your security and your sense of security for yourself, your sense of self-security, because of our convenient culture, we give away a lot of our private intimate pieces of ourselves for anyone with the hacker's mind to take from us. For convenience sake, let's say you want to order out some food, you put in your credit card information. What's to stop a hacker from hacking that takeout order, that delivery services informational system and getting all your personal information? Side note, that's happened already plenty of times before. Another thing that we sacrifice for convenience is our privacy. So using that example from before, let's say someone hacks into X delivery services informational base. Now they have your information. You've already sacrificed your privacy. They know who you are, your identity, your social, your credit card number. They can go to town. <laughs> the identity theft is rampant in today's society. There's no privacy because of our lust of convenience. That has allowed tech companies to infiltrate our lives. They mine us for data, watching our every step like the good big brother that they are. What we don't know is that all this data that they've been mining from our usage of these apps, of these waves of convenience, they then sell to the highest bidder. For a lot of us, we don't know who this higher bidder might be. Could be companies, could be countries. What they do with this information is they strategize around us around our ways, our habits, our ways of thinking. That is something that we've given up our privacy, our security, our autonomy, our sense of self. These are the sacrifices to convenience. And I want us to think about those. The costs that come with convenience are too many to mention, but I've narrowed them down to three. Some costs to convenience include the devaluation of people, seeing people as less than people, seeing people rather as vehicles and vessels for the things that you want and you need, seeing someone as an actual task rabbit or someone that can get this thing done, as opposed to a full person, as opposed to someone that can stand on their own too. As a matter of fact, because of that, I feel like they're on a higher level because they're able to do this for themselves so much so that they're able to provide for others as well. You think of how we devalue delivery workers, warehouse workers, all of these people that are caught giving labor to these systems of convenience and we devalue them. A lot of people don't even tip the delivery driver. Packages that are sent to your crib, they aren't as seen as people. This thing is done so that person is no longer of any use to me or of any value to me. And that's wrong in and of itself. Another cost of convenience is the environmental cost to convenience. I know I'm sticking with the delivery of food as a huge example. That's just one example, but let's keep running with that. Let's say we have someone deliver food to us. This food is delivered to someone in, a, in, a, in an automobile, I'm assuming a car. That's a waste of gas already polluting the environment. That's one. Secondly, the packaging of the food probably is going to be in a paper bag and in a plastic bag with plastic utensils. I am definitely guilty of ordering delivery and takeout foods for sure in my past. And I already know the game. It's going to offer you an excess of all these things. And then all of that, once it's done, all that single use plastic and paper, once it's done, you toss it out. That is adding pollution to the environment. So think of the environmental costs uh, when you make these decisions for things to be convenient. The last cost that we're going to be discussing in the costs of convenience would be the personal costs to you. 
to you as the individual. The cost to our health that we cannot pay for the long term because of the fact that we try to make things convenient and food has been made convenient for us, obesity is rampant. The health of American citizens has been declining for years now because of these convenient systems. Let's just stick with food here because that's the most primal, the most carnal, the one thing that we can all relate to given anything else. Let's just look at the convenience in America. It's so convenient for me right now to go down the street to this fast food restaurant and order food, which they waste plastic and paper, toss it out, and then go about my day like nothing happened. That leads to the obesity in people, as rampant illness and dis-ease in people due to the heightened convenience of things. There's diseases in this world that are curable. They're not hereditary, they're nutritionary. And because of the, the fact that we don't see these things as what they really are, as our habits of convenience, we think of these things as hereditary, but that's not really it. They are inherited habits habituality. It's a habit to go to this fast food restaurant and to this other restaurant or to this food truck and get some food and go on about our day after satisfying that craving and that urge. But that's the thing is that that's the cost. Through all these costs, the main thing is that we're becoming slaves to our urges and our cravings because they've become so convenient to us. And that's the downside to this thing. In the costs of convenience, I want us to examine the company of convenience. The only company I'll name outright is Amazon. It is fuck Amazon today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Amazon is the company of convenience. Their business model is convenient. Practices that they have are all aimed around making everything convenient for you and no one else. These practices that Amazon has, how do I put it? Exploitative, abusive, detrimental, and it's all for the sake of convenience. Now, I don't want you to think I'm exaggerating when I say this. So I wanted us to go ahead and look at the business practices of Amazon. If you don't know the business practice, the, the business model, they're essentially an online shop. For this online shop, they have a system of warehouses. For those warehouses, they have warehouses, warehouse workers. These warehouse workers have a hierarchy from the laborer to the supervisor role to managerial. What we come to find out is that that bottom tier of Amazon warehouse workers, they are abused to the point of death. And I'm not joking around with this. I'm going to go ahead and link in the show notes something so you can understand more for yourself and see for yourself the business practices of Amazon. There have been stories of Amazon workers dying of exhaustion in Amazon warehouses. A normal person would think, okay, business is done for the day. But one particular story that I'm pulling from an episode of John Oliver is that this person that died while working for Amazon was just covered with tarp just covered with a little blanket and everyone else was told to keep on working. Now let's really think about that. They, Amazon, in that moment devalued someone because they are no longer able to work and provide productivity for them. So they just put a blanket over them and they said, well, we'll handle this when we can get a chance to. It'll be probably for the end of the day, the end of the week, whenever. That's so wrong so wrong. These jobs, I want you to understand, use Amazon as an example. These jobs will post your job posting before they'll even post your obituary. So please be mindful of that whenever you make a career decision or whenever you make a life decision. Now, fuck these jobs. They don't care about you. And girl, let's fuck Amazon. Another practice that I want us to look at Amazon is the way that they got to where they are. Amazon, what they do is they cut corners and they shave points off all the time. Amazon, they get products onto their website and they sell them at a cheaper cost. And you think, damn, that's hustling backwards, but that's actually what they want. They want you to become reliant on these cheaper prices so that way they can cut their they can cut their business out. They can cut their, their competitors out because competitors can't go that cheap, but they can. Why? The reason why is the last reason why this company of convenience needs to be taken out. Amazon does not pay any taxes. Right now, you and I and every other person in America pays more taxes than Amazon and the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. And I'm not joking about this shit when I say that immigrants pay more taxes than the richest man in the world. And that's exactly how they become the richest people in the world. That's exactly how it became, uh, Amazon has become the richest company in the world through these shaving of points, through these cutting of corners, through all these loopholes designed that they've implemented and they've bribed politicians to be able to say, I'm not paying any taxes. All of these are schemes. And that's what Amazon is, is a big ass scheme meant to take your money, meant to take your autonomy, your self-reliance and have you enslaved to them, which is why I don't shop at Amazon. And I urge all of us to not shop at Amazon as well. So on to our next segment, I want us to get into the weeds of our garden. When we think about the weeds of our garden, we think about all the mess that has been made 
Weeds are things that we did not want, did not intend to be in our garden, but they're here now, so we gotta deal with them. So let's go ahead and get into some weeds and pull into the weeds. First weed that comes up in terms of convenience is how can we justify this culture of convenience? Is it possible that we could keep on building to this system, to this culture of convenience? The short answer is we simply can't. There is no justification for a system and a culture that oppresses, dominates, makes people less than who they are. It's an oppressive system designed to be oppressive. There is no justification for it. If you're someone that's out there being okay with getting everything handed to you, I see it as you wanting this culture to remain or to even get better. This system, it can't get better because it's wrong from the get-go. So if you're someone that's advocating for this system to continue and you like the way things are, I can't really speak to you. I can't really consider you an adult. I consider you like a child, the worst kind of child, the, the spoiled brat that wants everything given to them on a silver spoon and platter. That's facts. When we think about some of the weeds, we have to understand that we are deserving, we are worthy, and have earned the right to a good life full of all the things that we desire. And that's not something that has sought out for. This is something that is inherent into everyone. It's inherent to all of us. We are deserving, we are worthy, and have earned a good life life. We have earned the means to a good life. We haven't done anything extraordinary. We're just human beings. We're owed that. That is something that has been given to us by our God creator. These are all facts. We're all worthy of a great life. In fact, a lot of us already have everything we need and everyone has whatever we need within us. It's all within. As the saying goes, go within so you're never without. But this culture of convenience and this idea of materialism, this culture of materialism has perverted us, has perverted our lives, so that we have had this idea about what our life should look like manipulated. Often we find the things that we wanted was because uh, we were trying to impress others or we were trying to live the life of others, not understanding in this idea of keeping up with the Joneses, a good luxury life is a simple one. And that's, that really is it for me. I'm like, as uh, less is more in my life. Good, luxurious life is as simple as it can get for me. And thinking about other weed, we realize that, oh my God, this is a big mess. This is a lot of weeds. What can we do? One thing that we can do from the jump that we could start today, an action item for yourself and for me as well, is inconvenience yourselves. Let's inconvenience ourselves as much as possible. If you really think of what we're doing in terms of inconveniencing ourselves, we're hustling backwards. That's hustling backwards. I thought life was supposed to get easier. I will say, as someone that has lived with their struggles and the sacrifices and the costs that I've paid and the sacrifices I've made, life does not get easier, fam. I just wanna be very frank, life does not get easier. All right, it gets harder, this shit gets harder. <laughs> <laughs> but there's like a, there's a peace and a solace in knowing that. So when we inconvenience ourselves, what are we doing? We are putting in work and energy into actively inconveniencing ourselves in the process of unlearning these convenient ways and building a more sustainable and happier future for ourselves. We're building our resiliency, our willpower, and our determination. These are all things that have been taken away by outsiders. That They have taken away our energy, They're like energy vampires of the world. And those are things that exist. I just want you to know energy vampires are a real thing. We've allowed them to take our energy, which is wrong. Once we become more resilient, once we become more determined and we have more willpower, the world is ours. That's not the, the secret of life that people want to you to know because why they want your dollar that's another we that we can get into another we that we're discussing is we have to put our money where our mouth is that means voting with your wallet in short what that means is not giving any money to these convenient systems that's why I don't shop at Amazon. Fuck them. I'm not one that orders takeout or delivery as much as I used to before. I was a fiend. I will admit, all right, I was a fiend. I used to do a lot of these things a lot of the time. Over time, I've cut all of that consumption down. All of that convenience has been cut down to a bare minimum. I don't need that. Why? Because I see voting with my wallet and my money as the main source of how my voice will be heard. Essentially, right? That's how, that's the language of the rich is your dollars and shit makes perfect sense to me. And voting with your wallet, what that means is using your money to align yourself with the things that you know are right and just, which include, for me, not ordering takeout, investing in groceries, local groceries, that you buy for yourself. Whenever I do groceries now, instead of having Instacart, which I've never used personally, or instead of ordering takeout and delivery, I meal prep and plan my weeks out in advance. I use the food that is in my fridge. I plan out what I need. I go out to whatever local grocery store is in the block. Living in New York, living in Miami, there's a ton of local grocery stores. Wherever you're living at, or whether it is easier for you, 
or harder for you, I encourage you to go ahead and shop locally and support local businesses as much as possible. Support that, that bodega on the corner or that mom and pop food spot on the corner as much as possible. You're aligning your energy with the things that are right and just in this world. Knowing that the food essentially comes from the same farmers in the same place, but you're providing more for that mom and pop food spot at the corner and you're aligning your wallet and your stomach with things that are right and just, which is supporting your local people, supporting your community. That's not something that the people that have developed these systems of convenience want us to do, which is why I urge all of us to do it. And I promise you, your wallet and your stomach will thank you because they have, mine have thanked me for sure. Another weed that comes about, now this is more metaphysical. We have to train more. We have to train our minds and our bodies more to become resilient, to have that willpower and to become determined, which means in short, when we inconvenience ourselves physically, you have to move your body more, brother. You have to sweat more, pick up heavier things, pick up heavy things, pick up your things, clean up your messes. <laughs> Don't have someone come into your house and clean up your messes for you. A, that lets me know that you're not to be trusted in cleaning up your own messes. B, that lets me know that you're okay with having other people clean up your shit for you. Those are just wrong. With the physical movement of your body in terms of picking up heavy things and not having them delivered, you're training yourselves. With the physical movement of your body to clean up your messes, you're not only cleaning up your space, but you're cleaning your body as well. You're removing these toxins from your physical space and your body as well. You're sweating more. You're getting these toxins out. It's what every part of your body craves. You have to listen to your body. Let's start listening to our bodies now. Let's pick that weed out of our garden. And let's say I'm going to start moving my body more and stop being a sedentary couch potato. The last weed that we can pull out of this garden is the reliance of others. Let's gain a sense of pride in our autonomy. When you do something, when you do something with your hand, whether that be cooking or building or creating, that creation, that alchemy, you get a great sense of pride in that alchemy, in that ability. You did that. You made that. That happened because you, your willpower, your resilience, and your determination made that happen. That pride and that humility, a manifestation of this thing that you can look at and see, oh my God, this reward being the result of the thing created, it boosts your self-esteem to heights never imagined. That helps you grow in the process. And you know, here at All Growth, we're only focused on the things that grow, including you. Right? Wrapping up the episode, everyone, it's time to harvest the fruits of our labor. In this harvest, let's look at what we learned about convenience. We realize that convenience is killing us by the millions. If you adhere to this system of convenience, it is slowly killing us. It has already claimed millions of lives already because what we thought was good for us isn't really good and it has instead empoisoned ourselves, our people, and has perverted our way of life. So that's something that we've learned. What can we take with us now from this episode? Now we have all that we need already within us. I urge everyone to go within so you never go without. We are all that we need. Getting something because it's convenient comes with a hidden cost and a sacrifice. In our harvest, let's look at what we gain. Doing more for ourselves, relying on ourselves more, creating more with our own hands and building our resilience, our determination, and our willpower, we have a greater sense of pride in ourselves. We're not cutting corners anymore. We're not changing points anymore. That's not the kind of men and women we want to create in this world. So because of that, we have a greater sense of pride in ourselves. We're able to trust ourselves more. We have more self-esteem. We have a new way of seeing how our lives and the lives of others are connected. Your decisions affect others, whether you realize it or not. And the more interconnected we see the world, we realize that this convenient system is actually out to destroy our world as we know it. So let's cut that out. Now, lastly, how have we grown? In our harvest, let's look at what we've learned and how we've grown. We are aware now that convenience is all around us and is a threat to our survival. It really is. I, I know for some of us hearing this, we might think that I'm exaggerating and um, hyperbole and shit, but I, I hope not. I hope you can see what I see in the fact that if we continue to adhere to these convenient systems, the way the world the, the world that we know is, is see, will cease to exist. And the way we have grown, I've provided us action steps that you and I can both take and I have have been taking in order to g-check ourselves to make us more inconvenient so that we can build our self-reliance our willpower our determination and boost our self-image our esteem which is the esteem of our motherfucking selves lastly we aren't relying on others for sustenance and can fend for ourselves when you become self-reliant when you're able to fend for yourselves and provide for yourselves the world is endless the, <laughs> the world is yours that about wraps it up here for me folks remember to subscribe rate and review this episode uh, our twitter and our instagram is all 
all growth pod as well head on over and follow us there recommend us to a friend of a friend of a friend shit maybe we can get our friends we can do this every weekend uh look forward to the next episode and seeing y'all in the meantime in between time keep growing keep glowing keep going Thank you.